Welcome everybody to Everybody Has a Story. If you ever wanna be a guest on this series, please reach out to me. It is a platform for you, you anybody, whoever you are, if you have something you wanna talk about, something you're passionate about, advice you wanna to share to the world, please reach out to me and use this platform. I'd love to have you as a guest. So today's guest with me, I have, I have Angelica. <laughs> on the top of my head um and she wants to talk a little bit about duality uh so i'm going to let her do that and what i know about duality uh for example is you know good versus evil or dark and light you have to have a little you have to be able to go into the dark and recognize the dark and accept the dark in order to be the light that we need to be in the world um, so I'm going to let Angelica take it over. Uh, she has a lot to say, I'm sure. And then we're going to share your information at the end, too, because people can find you on YouTube. You are a beautiful singer. From what I understand, I went and listened to some of your songs. And I'm just so grateful that you came on the show here today. And I'm looking forward to what you have to say. So go ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Lonnie, for having me on your show today. Um, yes, so duality, you asked me the other day what what topic I would like to speak about. And I think this is one of the most important topics that I think we need to learn more nowadays because of everything that's going on in the world. Um, I, I noticed over the years we have this fear of, of uh, we, we don't necessarily voice it, but we do have this fear at some level of being bad. Even, oh, I want to be good. Oh, I'm good. Or we try to prove ourselves that we're good. Then we keep pushing away that, you know, unwanted evilness or however we want to call it. Um, and I think that the more we do that, the more we actually we attract it. Because no matter what, at the end of the day, we have both in us. We have both in us. This world is all about duality. This world is made based on duality and what I feel that it's that is happening is we have to accept it and once we accept it and we know how to deal with it then we can move on and and actually take responsibility of everything that's happening in our life because there is nobody else that's doing things to us it's it's us we are creators we are extensions of God we have the same uh, qualities we just don't recognize this and I know I'm saying this I don't even recognize it but but I know theoretically and many times I you know I try to put it in practice as much as I can and everything I'm still struggling with the idea that I can create anything I want but I, I hope I'm getting there so I think part of it is to accept our duality we have a left and a right brain it's in our skulls that that in itself is proof of duality that exists in, within us, right? The left brain is uh, more analytical. The right brain is the path to God. So we always have to be vigilant to choose the right path. But at the same time, if we push at the other one, if we, whatever we say no to, we, we bring into our reality because we put our attention on it. And the more we push that side of us, the more it keeps coming back because we're putting our attention on it. And our attention is, is, is the creator. The, the creator, God, created everything by putting his attention. It, we have the same quality. So we, by putting on att our attention on something, we bring it closer to us. It's like um, it, the attention is like having a, 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 the most sophisticated pair of binoculars. That's how I like to, to think about it. And as soon as we put those binoculars at our eyes, we see things that probably we can't see with our naked eye, they come closer. So this is our attention. Whatever we put our attention, we bring to us. So even if it's something we don't want, even if it's something we push away, we're still bringing it to us by putting our attention, by simply putting our attention on it. It's the same with this negative side that exists in us. It's a personal journey that I have been going through my entire life in regards to duality. And that is, I grew up in a, in a family. Uh, my parents, I grew up as an Orthodox, which is similar to, to Catholics, uh, just slightly different, but very similar. And uh, I grew up with very damaging beliefs uh, about the devil that 
the devil is always at your doorstep and he's always there to get you and you know don't worry if you're gonna move a little bit further but don't worry he's gonna catch up with you and drag you back and you know like that's the beliefs i grew up with and i heard them from the priest in our community from my parents so i grew up with tremendous tremendous fears of the devil i know it sounds crazy but that was my experience that was my life for my entire life since i was born so i grew up in tremendous tremendous fears that over over time they developed into panic attacks by the time i was in my early 30s and it was all about that it was a, the fear of of this this entity or whatever you want to call it that it's always there you know god is the most powerful but he's far away the devil is right here that's that's the damaging beliefs that i grew up with and it's 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 a uh, 15 minutes it's a very short time now for me to explain the whole story but bottom line is i went through i what i like to call a divine intervention um about 10 years ago and then four years ago where and of course i did a lot of work within myself to get rid of those beliefs and four years ago i had basically an epiphany where I just turned 180 and I said, how about having compassion for him? How about looking at him? I say him because I, I don't mean to uh, offend anybody. I just, you know, we say God and the devil. But um, how about having compassion for him? How about looking at him from a different point of view? Maybe he's not here to get us like we'd be thinking. Maybe he's not the one who makes us do things. Oh, the devil made me do it. Maybe he's not. And the moment I, I that insane idea came to me, I, I felt like I, like I was transported to a completely different dimension for about six weeks. I was walking in pure love. I felt nothing else, nothing. I felt so light. So I had no worries, no fears, no, it's like, I am I am convinced I was walking in a completely different dimension. And during that time, six, seven weeks or so, I I had all these downloads and this story came to me, which which I have on YouTube. It's called Love is Light, Transmute Fear into Love, which is all about that. And um, uh, this story came to me and it, it was unbelievable how free I felt from that simple idea. And ever since I'm a huge, huge advocate of of you know you have to be responsible for the choices you make nobody makes you do anything and nobody's there to get you he's only here to offer us a platform duality so we get smart hopefully and choose right that's the only reason it's actually a gift for us this duality in whatever form we believe it exists me i grew up with pure religion the devil that's the form that duality takes for me and I dealt with it. So whatever, whatever you believe that duality, whatever duality means for you, it's there as a gift. That's how I look at it. And I know it's easy to say and harder to do, but that's that's the reality of it. And because of those six, seven weeks that I that I was in that amazing, beautiful dimension, I am convinced. I always go back because it's it's very easy to four years later to say okay what if i'm wrong what if i felt what i felt was not right but i always go to that feeling of sick that i had during those six seven weeks where i just knew i knew nobody could tell me otherwise yep so I, 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 hear that. I hear that angelica maybe just um <clears throat> i love what you're saying it's so true it's just like a plant okay think of a plant that's going to thrive when you give it water give it attention or a child when you feed it, give it attention or a pet, right? So it's the same thing. Things will thrive when we give it attention, when we feed it. And so any energy we're giving to anything, whether it's the energy of no, 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 I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. You're still feeding it. So it's going to thrive and survive. So yeah, what you're saying is finding that balance, right? Between the duality, that's key. We have the duality in the extreme opposite sides so that we can find the balance within us because we will be swaying. It's like a pendulum. <laughs> and then we come back and find that peace. And 
I had a similar experience to what you're describing. Um, that was in my early 20s. Um, I went within myself. I cut off the whole world and I did a sabbatical just for myself and I felt exactly what you um, explained. So I can relate. Thank you for sharing that because I remember what it felt like too and I can go back to that. It was just a pure sense of love. I could just walk down the road, look into people's eyes and see them and just feel love for them. Strangers, anybody, it just didn't matter. It was just the most peaceful state. I call it like a Jesus state. <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna let you continue. Maybe you can um, talk about how music um, came into your life out of you know your experiences because um, you are a beautiful singer. Thank you. Uh, well, music it's always been in my life. It's been I started singing at six years old in Romania, and then at eight I basically was a professional singer. We weren't making money during that time because I, I grew up in the communist regime and everything was to revere the president, the communist president. But um, here, professional means when you actually make a living. But there, we weren't getting paid, but we were working professionally. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, I've been singing since I was six, then on stage since I was eight. Um, I went to, uh, at 19, I actually won a competition in Romania, similar to the American Idol, just oh. that it lasted three days. Uh, the auditions weren't filmed or anything like American Idol here. It was just the actual competition, and I won that competition at 19. Then um, I was working with producers. Um, I don't like to brag about that too much, but I was, I was uh, on my way. Uh, and then... Um, I went to, I wanted to learn more about musical theater and I went to university for musical theater. Um, then I got married, I came to Canada and um, everything changed. Um, I went through, I would say four years of rebirth, giving everything up, um, divorce. Uh, so it was a period of time where I, I had to, you know, really focus on staying really sane at the time. I didn't even know English when I first came to Canada. So I had to start literally from scratch. Mm. And uh, then I went to college here. I'm thinking, okay, what can I do to be able to get a nice, you know, a, a half decent job because nobody would hire singers. That's all I knew. And I went to college for fitness and nutrition, actually. I ended up working out, working in a fitness facility in the fitness industry for 11 years, actually. And that's where I met my existing, my husband. And um, at the same time, in parallel, I continued working on my music, writing music. I started writing music. Um, in the meantime, <clears throat> music has always been in my, it's, it's my, it's my meditative ground. I, I, when I'm on stage, that's, that's my love for, it's, it's what I do. I tried to give it up a few times when I came here because it was very hard. And I couldn't. It, it, I just couldn't. It's it, there's something that won't let me, and and I don't mind. <laughs> it's called it's called a passion. Uh, when we have when we have a passion in life, it's it's it can never leave you. No matter how much you try and throw it away, it'll always come back. It's like um, magnetism. So that that's why it feels that way. And it's a beautiful thing to know what your passion is um, and know where you can where you can go when you need to be fulfilled or fill up your energy or or increase your vibration. You know, for you, it's music. And that's that's a wonderful thing. Some people don't know yet uh, what their passion is. Um, so if you sit with yourself really quiet uh, uh, and listen really quiet and intently, you'll know what your passion is. It's that thing that keeps revisiting you all through your life. Right. Um, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you offer at this time, what you do, and where people can find you and follow you and your music. It's all about love and God. That's all that my music is about. And that's all that keeps coming out of me. I, mean, I tried very, very hard to write a regular mainstream song because I was told in the past, you won't be able to make it with the songs you write. You, the lyrics you write are not mainstream. So I tried very hard to write regular. And the harder I tried, the more God and uh, forgive and things like that come out. Remember who you are. So what I do have is um, my website, which is iamangelica.com, and my YouTube page, where actually 
people can listen to every single one of my songs for free and um, uh, they, you can also listen to the children's story that I wrote free. I put the entire story on YouTube uh, because I think it's important and even adults, actually adults find it, um, like it very much. So it's called again, Light, Love is Light and uh, it's on my YouTube. Yes. And it's you Angelica is, I, my pronunciation, my name pronunciation is Angelica. I like to keep that because it's Romanian, uh, but it's spelled like Angelica. So yeah, I apologize for just having a brain freeze and, and not even remembering your name at all. Um, mm -hmm. Had a lot going on. My The food truck delivery showed up during the interview, which I expected he might, but I was hoping he didn't. Um, so, you know, just lots on the mind. We all have lots on the mind right now. So I apologize for that. And Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Nobody knows how to. It's it's Romanian. It's no, no worries. Angelica. Beautiful. So what I'll do, um, we'll, we'll end this. And again, I just, I, I'm so grateful to you and I appreciate you um, being my Facebook friend in the first place uh, and sharing your story. And if you have anything else that you're passionate about that you want to come on again and be a guest in the future, please let me know. And that goes out for all of you who might be listening. I love you all. We will put Angelica, Angelica's uh, information in the comments, okay? And then on YouTube, this will also be on YouTube. So I'll put that in the description there as well. So have a blessed day, everybody. Thank you for being here, Angel Angelica. Do you want to say anything to sign off? Just wanted to say thank you so much for ha having me on your show. You're beautiful inside and out you're radiating this light and i'm really really happy that i i met you on facebook thank you